Yeah. Yeah. Good evening everyone. So, understanding protein folding. This has been a question for a long time and scientists have been working on this problem uh, from around like, uh, 1900s. But recently, there has been a new development, understanding protein non-folding. So, why do proteins not fold? Initially, it was a question that how do proteins fold? But now the question is why are proteins unfolded? <coughs> this was started with the structure function paradigm. So initially it was hypothesized that a proper structure, a proper 3D structure is required for proper function of the protein. So this was told by the log and T model where the substrate acts in T and the enzyme is a log where they fit perfectly so as to have a proper function for the enzyme. <coughs> but in the intrinsically disordered proteins, we find that the proteins are not having proper structure. So how are they formed? In many crystal structures, uh, crystal, finding of crystal structures were one of the most important discoveries where uh, uh, the structure function paradigm were related. So, scientists started studying the structure of the proteins so that they can relate it to the functions and then they started crystallizing and then uh, got the structure of the protein. But in many of the X-ray crystals, they were missing electron densities found. So, and these electron, missing electron densities were found to uh, give very important functions for the protein. So what, why are the protein uh, electron densities missing? Later, when NMR studies were developed, in the NMR structures, the proteins are found to be more flexible compared to the X-ray crystallography structures. And these missing electron densities were also found. So below the NMR structure is shown, where the missing electron densities uh, part is highly flexible. So these are disordered regions in the protein. And these disordered regions to, uh, have very important functions in the protein interactions with other diagrams. So how are the uh, intensity disordered structures discovered? So they were uh, discovered. They were found to have. Uh, they were found with these methods by in cyclic circular diagram. The secondary structures were observed, but in intensity disordered proteins, the secondary structures were not proper. Secondary structures were not observed. Then small x rays, small and x rays fragments, gamma optical activity, and protein sensitivity. The intensity disordered proteins are uh, have a huge surface area and they are not properly structured. So many of the uh, bonds are exposed to protease, so they are highly protease sensitive compared to the ordered regions. So we, uh, initially people started finding these exceptions, like a myelin basic protein, scientists uh, tried to stress it for around 4600 attempts and they were all failed because it has some intensity disordered regions. And people started classifying it as uncrystallizable structures or giving, started giving different names. So they were all scattered among the literature. And later, in the late uh, 1990s, they were organized into a single group of single group called the intensity disorder or natively unfolded proteins. <coughs> so, in uh, structured regions, the, there is structure sequence relationship where the protein function is detected. Uh, protein structure can be deciphered from the sequence of the particular protein. Even in disordered proteins, the pro uh, protein uh, we can find whether the protein is disordered or ordered from the from their protein sequence only. So this is very important because many classifiers are further made so, uh, so that the protein sequences can be classified whether they are ordered or disordered regions. The first important uh, discovery was the relation with uh, what was classifying between disordered proteins and ordered proteins. This was a, uh, this is UST plot which is the plot between the mean net charge and mean hydrophobicity. So, Observing the natively disordered proteins, it was seen that uh, the unfolded proteins have a higher content of uh, higher content of mean net charge and lesser hydrophobicity. For protein folding, hydrophobicity leads to the collapse of the protein, protein structure, and we are higher. Uh, so having lesser hydrophobic domain makes it less possible for folding, and having a higher net charge leads to repulsion between the charge charge residues and leads to disordered structures. 
So this in this plot, uh, the mean net charge and hydrophobicity of each and every protein sequence was plotted, and they they uh, had a very good classification with, uh, between the disordered proteins and the ordered proteins. So this is the classifier which can be used. But further, this was not a clear cut um, classification. It was a rough classification between the proteins. But later, they were made, uh, for finding different ordered uh, ordered regions in a big protein and the disordered regions in the big protein, uh, they were further classified as well. Here, uh, further, there is ordered disordered composition profile where different amino acids were um, found, different, uh, different amino acids which are contributing to the disordered or ordered regions were plotted. The delta of microbial 3D is the difference between the disordered and the ordered residues in the particular protein uh, divided by the total number of ordered proteins. So, for each and every residue in the protein, uh, say as uh, tryptophan, it is the number of tryptophan residues which are present in the disordered uh, regions minus number of tryptophan residues present in ordered regions divided by number of tryptophan residues in ordered regions. So, this gives, this gives a classifier. So, the, uh, the ones which are negative, which are having negative value of that, those are uh, those contributing, those uh, those are more uh, present in disordered regions compared to the ordered regions. So, here we can find that. <coughs> Uh, higher net char higher charge proteins contribute uh, uh, contribute to ordered regions of the proteins, and uh, um, we can see tryptophan. Um, uh, higher higher charge proteins uh, contribute to uh, disordered uh, higher charge protein contribute to disordered regions of the proteins, and uh, uh, hydrophobic more hydrophobic residues, and which are having. Uh, Disulfate bonds they contribute to the ordered regions of the proteins. So here you can find tryptophan cysteine being more in the ordered region compared to uh, 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 asparagine and uh, charge other charge residues in the ordered, uh, disordered regions. So different classifiers are then constructed for prediction of intrinsically disordered proteins from their sequences. These are some of the Software which are available to classify, Ponder, Fold, Index Fold, and Fold, this, this software, this pro, which can give you classification between a better protein, this order or disorder. So, for comparing uh, different classifiers, there is one kind of plot where the charge hydrophobicity, uh, charge hydrophobicity plot and the cumulative distribution function are compared. So, here we see that uh, in the blue, blue region, they are all the ordered, ordered proteins where both CDF and uh, charge hydro, uh, hydrophobic plots gives uh, that they are ordered proteins. In the red region, we can find that uh, charge hydrophobic phobicity plot gives positive and uh, CDF also gives positive. And in the uh, pink region, we can find that charge hydrophobic plot gives negative results and cumulative uh, distribution function gives positive results. And again, in the violet region, it shows charge and charge cumulative distribution gives positive and charge hydrophobicity gives negative um, results for that particular protein to be ordered or disordered. So here we can be sure that, that uh, in the um, red region they are completely ordered, com completely disordered, and in the 55.5 region they are completely ordered because both the classifiers give us positive. The intrinsically disordered proteins can be classified into collapsed and extended disorders. These are broad, broad classifications because uh, disordered proteins can be completely disordered or they can have some disordered regions in the particular protein. So here the ordered region, then the molten globule, pre molten globule and the coil structures are given. So um, in the molten globule is classified as collapsed disorder and the pre molten globule and the coil structures are extended disorders. Here, molten globules are formed because uh, one is there is no proper hydrophobic collapse for that particular protein to be formed, or else uh, water is not a proper sol solvent for protein structures. So that's why uh, molten globules and pre-molten globules are stable instead of being intermediates in protein formation. <coughs> Here, molten globules uh, have a smaller hydrodynamic radius compared to the pre-molten pre and the uh, random coil structure. So the functional repertoire of the 
and that's the result of the can show here. Um, there are the flexible ensemble can be uh, can have very important functions as flexible linker, display of site for protease activity, or entropic presses, rings and clocks. So I will be discussing about the entropic clocks later. And in many cases, the intrinsically disordered proteins have ordered to, disordered to order transition, where the intrinsically disordered proteins are binding to a certain ligand or a protein, they convert to a proper folded structure. This also has very important functions in molecular recognition, virus assembly, and scaling. So first, the entropy chain. Uh, in many uh, many signaling pathways, uh, one of the examples is voltage. Uh, so, sorry, one of the uh, in many of the uh, channel uh, channel pathways. Here it is uh, uh, voltage gated potassium channel, uh, where there is an entropy chain which is intrinsically disordered protein in the particular protein structure. <coughs> Here we find that for uh, potassium to be uh, um, channel across the particular uh, particular membrane. Here, a particular time is, uh, the voltage gate should be kept open for a particular time period. So this chain acts as an entropy block for keeping it open for that particular time period. So the time uh, with uh, time for which the particular gate is open depends on the chain of the chain of the uh, chain length of the particular uh, uh, protein. So here. <coughs> when uh, the pro when the uh, gate is in closed condition, uh, open open position where it can uh, it can open where it can be activated. So there, when the particular protein uh, particular gate is open, then it stays for a uh, stays uh, when, when the particular gate is open for some time. Then the uh, closing is done by random uh, interactions, finally leading to closing of the structure. So the complete closing of the uh, voltage gated channel depends on. Uh, the random interactions and finding the particular position and find, reaching the final confirmation. So, it, uh, so the entropy chain has a very important function in keeping the voltage gated channel open or closed and keeping having the time period for it. And it was found that change varying the chain length of the uh, protein changes the time in which it closes. So the uh, Time variation is proportional to the square of the chain length. So this shows that the entropy chain is responsible for the time period of opening of the gate or the voltage gated channel. And many of the intrinsically disordered protein acts as hubs in signal networks. Hubs and signal, uh, signal networks are a complex set of uh, complex networks. So, in fact, there are some proteins in which many pro many other proteins interact, or the particular protein interacts with some, other, some many other proteins. So, many of the intrinsically disordered proteins act as hubs in the uh, hubs in the signaling networks. Meaning, um, uh, many uh, disordered proteins are there where many other ordered proteins come and interact with them. So a single protein interacts with many other single disordered protein can interact with multiple ordered proteins or a single ordered protein interacts with multiple intrinsically disordered proteins. So they act as very important steps in the signaling pathways. Scaffold proteins. Uh, in the signaling pathways and other, uh, many other mechanisms, there are scaffold proteins which brings together all the particular enzymes or the proteins involved in that particular pathway and then positions it accordingly in that particular uh, uh, confirmation structure so that it can act fast and the reaction can proceed. So many of the intensely disordered proteins are very big structures which can, which can interact with multiple proteins at different sites simultaneously so that they bring different proteins together in a particular region and then they uh, assemble it properly in proper confirmation so that they can react. One important uh, property of intrinsically disordered proteins is their high specificity and low affinity. Why do they have high specificity and low affinity? Uh, one is uh, the intrinsically disordered proteins, they can wrap around the particular uh, protein and they can adjust its structure accordingly and have sequence uh, sequence based interactions to the protein. So they have very high specificity. And again, because it is again uh, a sequence based interaction. So, uh, 
they recognize the differentially disordered proteins interact by sequence recognition. And again, uh, low affinity because um, they are very external structures, they are not folded properly. So they are easily degraded in the system. So this can be used as a very good control for signaling systems. Because it is very important to stop a signal as, uh, as it is important to start a signal. So intrinsically disordered proteins can be used very easily to control signal pathways because it can be, uh, it has very low affinity but with high specificity. Transcription rate of the, of all the proteins, but it was observed that uh, the intensity 
chemistry disorder proteins were easily degraded. So they were continuously produced and they were degraded so that they can be kept in control. And again, uh, translation of ordered proteins, they, tra they are translated and then they fold for forming proper 3D structure. And in intrinsically disordered proteins, they form a partially folded structure and they can move into three ways. One is they can be degraded or they can be uh, stabilized by post translation modifications. So, post translation modification stabilizes the intrinsically disordered structures so that they don't degrade very fast. And again, binding to ligand. Might induce it to form a proper 3D structure. The D spike concept. Uh, as I told already, the uh, intrinsically disordered proteins are related to um, many signaling pathways and they are very important, they are as a very important control in many pathways. So uh, any pro any small problem with the intrinsically disordered proteins may lead to diseases. So this is that th this this is called disorder and disorder. It is, uh, it is a, because intensity disorder proteins are already disordered, but if there is any more disorder in that particular thing, then it might lead to diseases. <coughs> the confirmation of disorders might be misfolding, misidentification, missignaling, or misregulation. Uh, deposition of protein abrasions. Uh, intensity disordered proteins have very high possibility of forming, uh, forming uh, amino fibril structures because uh, they are kind of. Uh, Structure which are accum which are uh, accum accumulated structures which form higher bigger molecules which then get uh, accumulated in the cells which leads to the destruction of the cell and they also lead to many neurodegenerative diseases which are due to amino acid formation or some other uh, disorder in the protein and prion prion disorder is one of the kinds of intrinsic disorder in protein um, and molecular disease. What are amyloid fibrils? Okay, amyloid fibrils are formed by uh, accumulation of proteins. Because the proteins start building upon each other and then form a bigger structure. So they are called those, those structures are called amyloid fibrils. Yeah, they form by beta aggregation usually. So the beta structures in the proteins aggregate together and form bigger structures. So as IDPs play a very important role in many of the pathways, so they can act, they can be very good drug targets because they, uh, and again IDPs have high specificity and low affinity. So for drug targets, it should have higher affinity and uh, in order to make in order to have less effects of the drug by the drug, so it uh, it needs low affinity in some cases. So this can be used as very good drug drug, drug targets in the protein system. And one more thing is, you can induce structure in intensely disordered proteins to prevent their function. And inducing structure is found to be easier. 